it will successfully make a backend call at this point. Search only when the debounce items are updated. In this video, we're gonna talk about debouncing and how it can improve your performance as well as user experience. Before diving into that, let me show you an example. Let's say you have an input field and you are searching for some user. Let's say the name is Chelsea. So you will write C H E L. As you can see, a request would be sent to the server on every keystroke. Let me open up the network tab and let me reset the search and redo the search again. C H E L. So before showing the results, you can see for the four characters, we have sent four individual requests to the server. This can be inefficient and lead to performance issues. So what debouncing does? Debouncing allows you to delay the execution of this search function until after a specified time has passed. In simple terms, it will wait for the user to stop typing. After a certain time has passed, after the user has stopped typing, it will perform only one single search. Let me show you the current code and then I will implement the debouncing. So this is the current code. Here I have the input field. In the on change, I am updating the search term. And whenever the search term is updated, it searches for users. And in the search users function, I am making a backend call. Let's cut down the unnecessary calls made to the backend. For that, I will create a simple state. I'll name it debounced search and uh, the function should be set debounced search Wait. initially it would be blank after this let's create a use effect And the dependency array for this will be our search term. Whenever the search term is updated, this use effect will run. Inside this, I will implement a set timeout function. Let's name the set timeout function as timeout. You can give any name. Set timeout. And the delay should be, let's do 1000 milliseconds of delay. And inside that, let's get the search term, search term and, and set the search term, whatever user has searched to this state like this. Whatever user has typed in the input field will be set to the search term. And then when set search term is updated, it will be set to the set debound search term after 1000 milliseconds. The debouncing is not completely implemented yet. Let me show you why. When you go to the website and let's clear all the previous calls and let's search for Chelsea. You will see it is the same again. And now let me come back here. Now what I will do here, I have another use effect which runs on search terms updation. It will now search only when the debounce items are updated. So it will have the debounce search. So it will search for debounce search term. And one more thing we have to do. We have to remove this timeout. For that we will use return to clear up the timer. Clear timeout. And the name of that timeout which is this one. Now the last step where we make call to this search users function. It should only be called when the debounce search term is updated. So we will set debounced search. And if debounce search is available, only then search for users. Now let's get back to the browser and clear all the previous calls. And now let's search for Chelsea. When I type C, it will make a call. When I type H, it will make a call. And when I type E, it will make another call. But what is the difference? If I simply type CHEL quite fast enough, it will make only one single call. This whole debouncing process will not only cut down the number of calls made to the backend, but will improve the performance of your web app as well. So how this basically works is that 
you have searched for a term and it is into Q after 1000 milliseconds it will search for your term but if the search term is updated before 1000 millisecond it will destroy the previous function and remount so let's understand this whole debouncing thing with a simple illustration i have typed c here then it will start a timer for one second let's draw that as well here the time is zero and here the time is one so the timer is supposed to make a backend call after this one second ends now if i type the next letter which is h before the one second ends so it will never reach to this point and now what happens the next one second timer starts here the timer is supposed to end at this point so let's say now i don't type anything for one second now i type the next letter after one second ends here previously what was supposed to happen after this one second timer of h ended it was supposed to make a backend call so it will successfully make a backend call at this point and now again one second of a timer starts here and again the timer is supposed to end here now if i type the next letter before the timer ends it will never reach the end point where it is supposed to make the backend call and the next timer for the l character will start here i have created a repository including the source code of this video and as well as all the upcoming videos the link will be in the description go check it out if you like this tutorial make sure to like this video and subscribe and don't forget to follow this series for upcoming videos i am somo signing off